Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Groovy Tuesday Stroke Pergamano School. Um, my name is Paul Church here, Clarity Stamp in the UK, Pergamano Limited as well. And um, take a while for people to, to join us. So I'm just going to waffle for a first few minutes. How are we all doing today? I can see we've got some lovely people. Let me switch on the chat. There we go. Let's see when people start saying good morning, good morning, good morning. Nice cup of coffee. Thank you to the lovely Jilly. There we come. Who, who's first in the room today? Susan Young, followed by Hilda Smith and then Linda Walker. Good morning, ladies. I hope you're well. Oh, my phone. Let's have a look. That should be Jilly. Sound is good. Thank you, Jilly. So the lovely Jilly is in the room with you today. So if you've got any questions, ask away. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Jill, Pamela, Bernie. How are we all doing today? Tuesday, last Tuesday seems a, an age ago. I don't know what's happened in between last Tuesday. <laughs> Just losing track of days. And this morning, all of a sudden, it was like we had a quick catch up with Linda about half hour ago. And then all of a sudden, the time just went whoosh. We've got three minutes to go. Better put a shirt on. Better look a bit presentable. So I've got a nice floral shirt on today to go with the frosted floral February. So um, without further ado, I think it's time. There's plenty of people in the room now. I mean, it's time to introduce the lovely lady herself, Linda Williams. Good morning. Good morning, Linda. I was just thinking, you know, I'll have to find something floral. <laughs> to, to compete with your shirt <laughs> you could have made an effort linda <laughs> in between in between sort of a, a, maybe we have a bit of a break do what you can come up with yeah Get rob. i'm sure rob must have a flower power shirt or something from back in the well, day i keep threatening every time we see a fancy shirt on tv you, you, you know you, Got to get your sunglasses outside. Got to buy you one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking lost. <laughs> it's a really nice bright shirt with Mr. Rob. He does actually wear brighter shirts, bright brighter shirts on holiday. I don't think he'd be set, seen dead in the this country though. <laughs> <laughs> I think when we go on holiday, I think we all do that, don't we? I mean, I've got sort of like bright yellow swimming trunks, um, like shorts. <laughs> I would yeah. wear I wouldn't wear them walking around Tunbridge Wells, but no, on holiday no. it's different, isn't it? I um, mean, I've worked hard on Rob over the years. I mean, when I first met him, he used to wear socks and sandals. <laughs> 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 it took me a while to get him. I never my daughter bought him a pair of socks at Christmas, and they had actually the marks of the sandals on them. You know, it's it's a, it's a big it's a big uh, laughing point in our family, Rob. With his, um, apparently it's quite fashionable now i think a lot of the youngsters are, are sort of i think it's quite in some of the european companies it's quite trendy to wear um, socks so. with sandals yeah. so and there socks you go and crocs. yeah socks, socks and, crocs. and crocs trend <laughs> setting is our rob <laughs> yeah 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 so. so we're continuing with our beautiful frosted floral overlays um during the pergamano school this month and last week we sort of did a little bit of, I can't find my piece that I did last week. This room looks as if there's been I have snow. Seen it. You did show me, you did pan over it in your arm. <laughs> I did, I've tidied the desk. And I'm just glad you can't see the floor. It looks like confetti. But all okay. will be revealed about that a little bit later on during yeah, the hour. We forgive you. We forgive you Thank on you. that point. <laughs> so the, the beautiful, I, I have got, I think I've got the frosted, no, I don't know what I have got. Mm. Well, you I've probably got it here. I was just looking for the pack that we're working on. I've got uh, it. Have you got it there, Linda? Sorry, yeah. I'm so disorganised this morning. Yeah. <laughs> to get the pack out. I've got the, I've got the embossing side of it. So. so we've got five different sets in the collection, but for during the month of February, we're looking at the beautiful um, frosted not the frosted the beautiful christmas rose and last week you showed us some beautiful pictures didn't you of all the different yeah what, the hellebore wasn't it it's is another yes. name for it yeah that's the other name for it and uh we've I've, I've got the pictures i'll show you the pictures i thought we'd get on with the embossing today and yeah. next week as well so we'll we'll 
half, we'll take it to the halfway point today and we'll take it to the finishing stages next week. And then okay. we'll, I, I might, if, if I can indulge in this one, I, I'll try and show you how to do that. All right? Wow. It's, <laughs> not, it's really not as difficult as it looks. Obviously. I've got one of them. I've got one of them here. Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> here's one I made. Here's one I made earlier. <laughs> See, it wasn't difficult, was it? It wasn't. No, it took me all of two minutes to walk down the stairs and get it off the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so this is this is the pack, and in the pack you've got your instructions on how to do the Christmas rollers. Um, yeah. It doesn't matter which pack you've got. Um, there are, f what were there, five, Paul, was five. it? Five, yes. We've five got the tulip, the amaryllis, the rose, and I've been given a set now. And fuchsia. the fuchsia. Fuchsia. Yeah. Okay. So you get this inside there as well. So it's, it's, a, it's a comprehensive guide to the stages of embossing. Um, I'm taking you through these stages. Everybody embosses differently, so you may you may progress a little bit quicker with on your first or second emboss. All I'm trying to do at this point is slow everybody down um, because everybody seems to a lot of new people seem to uh, emboss too quickly, and um, and it, it you know you break the paper, the fibers in the paper that way. So you've got comprehensive guide on the stages um, stage eight or nine would be a really nice um, embossed image if you've taken your time we don't need to do go to stage eight for this effect because we don't want to hide the coloring underneath so we probably will go to the stage five or maybe six really okay. all depends on how heavy you're going and if you go to the back you can you've got a progress record which is really good and you can take off the stages that you're at if you're really not sure i think that's a really good idea to have that at the back it's because often i mean if a lot of people are like me at home and sort of you'll put it down and then you'll come back to me and think oh what level did i do where have i got I and then say. i think that's where yeah. as you say you can then yes. go over it too much and in there you've got a practice sheet which looks something like that's what we was working on last week, wasn't we? Another, another little, we'll start ourselves off with a pra practice sheet again today. You know? So we worked on the practice sheet last week before. Um, before I said, it's best to work on a practice sheet and then go to your best piece and yes. start doing it just to get your eye in. So I need to, to always get my eye in before I actually go to my best piece that I'm going to make a project out of. So, and here you will see the stages. This is it. This is it as it looks on your sheet, and then you start to emboss, and this is probably um, halfway along. And then at the end, you rub out. That you can rub out these ink marks because it's very fine ink on printed on your parchment on the front of your parchment, and you can actually rub it out with the Faber Castell white rubber. Takes a little bit of rubbing, do it on a hard surface. But if you want that nice shaded look, you can rub it out. You don't have to rub it out if you like the lines, then that's entirely up to you. Or you can rub part of it out and leave part of the lines in, which which is, is quite nice in itself, you know. If you think part of your flower isn't quite well defined, well leave that little bit of the line in. You get yeah. to know. Um, mm. you know, so you get that. So, and in this, you've got um, a rough guide um, of a, the frosted overlight technique, a description, um, a little bit about embossing and colouring. And then uh, there are the others, the rose, the tulip, the amaryllis and fuchsia. So you get four Christmas rose printed on A5 parchment, so the white prints. Yeah. Uh, one Christmas rose elements, which are, which are the little little parts yeah. for you to practice on. Those are the elements. So you get one of those. Four A5 plain parchment. Uh, one Christmas rose printed in black on white paper, which is, find it, which is this one. Now the reason yeah. you've got that, because it acts as a pattern, it's the old fashioned way, the old traditional way of 
doing parchment craft. You put a plain piece of parchment on top and then you do your colouring. So you've got no hard outlines. I'll show you how to do and that. And that's what gives you that beautiful, soft, and that's what gives natural you that. look, doesn't it? So you yeah. Can see there are no hard outlines. There's no tracing involved in this. It's just coloured on top of the pattern, which is the way we used to do it. Um, right. With the traditional way. And um, you've got the Christmas rose printed in full colour on the A5 white. So you get one of those. And you've also got the Christmas rose printed on black. Lovely. In, in black. It's a really nice sort of comprehensive kit, isn't it? So, yeah. and yeah. even if, if you're sort of thinking, okay, well, I like parchment craft, but maybe I'm not into groovy, um, then this is a, a great sort of, it crosses over sort of, for me, it crosses over that traditional plus modern as well in relation to, you've got the traditional techniques, but then also you've got sort of like the the groovy side to it because it's the skills we would have learned by using the groovy plates to give us that line art. But if you're, if you're tuning in for the first time, you think, oh, I really like, look at this, then you haven't got to buy the whole groovy system. We do an accessories kit that gives you a blue mat, it gives you the two wooden tools and the eraser pencil as well. So that would be a really sort of good starting point. And then all you would need would be your coloring pencils. So you yeah. don't think, oh, I've got to invest in this. You haven't because we've put that little kit together. And I think so. And then, but for me, I think you would get become addicted because you're learning, you're sort of jumping ahead of the techniques, aren't you really? Yes, yes. Yeah, there's yeah, so right. there's a lot of techniques to learn, and I mean you you can you can start wherever you like. You can you can choose your own. The, I mean, some people prefer to to colour with with felt tips. Some people prefer to colour with pencils. Pencils are my choice, my main choice, mm. my favourites to colour with. But I mean, you know, you you can you can emboss in so many different ways. You can colour in so many different ways. It's such a it's such a, a, a there's such a lot of things to learn, but yeah. you don't have to learn them all. You can do just you can pick the little bits that you want you want to you know learn. And exactly, and I think this is what's great about the 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 Pergamano School and the Groovy Tuesdays that that whole library is there for you to go back. So even if you're joining us for the first time today and you're thinking, oh, I've missed what's but lesson one, lesson whatever, go to our website. We've got a section dedicated totally to the Pergamano school so you can go back and watch or you can go to our YouTube channel and you can see all the Groovy Tuesdays, all the Pergamano schools, all the Shack Shacks and there's loads and loads of video tutorials as well using the jelly plate so whatever type of craft you're into apart from soft craft we haven't gone down that road just yet <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd need to improve my knitting skills a little bit advance from scarves to maybe something else but, um, but yeah, there's a whole library and it's all free of charge and you can follow it at, at your own pace. Such a so, wealth, isn't there? Such a wealth of, of That's uh, right, yeah. Knowledge. So what we're <clears throat> going to pass over to the lovely Linda. Right. So uh, I'm just going to sit and admire now and watch so, and learn. All right. Let me show you. So our aim is to get to this stage, okay, where you've got some really nice shadow embossing there. So, um, and you can see the lines have been rubbed out. So you can see the light and the shade. I, I will, I'll recap um, some of the things that I told you last week. So where you can see one petal laying on top of another, you've got a little bit of shading. Okay, shading in the middle, because it's quite dark in there. A Little bit of shading there. So we can either emboss on the back, which gives you um, a, a flower, a petals that curve that way. Yeah. Or if you emboss it on the front, you've got petals that are curved that way, like a little cup. Now, yeah. you you might think that the with these 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 petals here have been been embossed that way, and those petals have been embossed that way. So those have been done from the back, and those have been done from the front. I'm not going to show you that. It's up to you to do that at home if you feel you want to do it this way. What, I, what I'm doing is I'm showing you how to emboss it all from the back. Because we have a lot of new people on here, 
Once we start turning over from the back to the front to the back to the front, I find new people get confused. So it's entirely up to you. If you do emboss on the front, you need to a little bit of cellophane bag, cello bag, and then you need yep. to hold it taut with your fingers, and then you need to emboss over the cello bag. Stops the paper from shining. And it also, if you've got white ink on the front, these tools will actually, the metal tools will actually turn the ink black. So it's very important with this type of embossing. If you're oh, using wow. it. Oh, that's, that's definitely good to know that. You don't want it to go yeah, black. It can do, yeah. I don't know. It, I think it mixes with the ink or something. Um, whether it would happen on these, I don't know. But if, you, if we traced with white ink years ago, then the ball tools would turn the ink black. So um, oh, wow. if you were tracing with pencil, then, you know, that wouldn't happen. But you, your parchment would still go shiny. Okay? okay. So you can see where we've introduced some shading. Um, some people were saying, I did notice that some people were having problems leaving gaps. Um, I'll go through that in a minute. Um, the gaps aren't particularly obvious. I've asked people just to do two, two layers with the six millimeter ball tool as homework. Okay? So yeah. let me go. So let me recap about the direction of the stroke so here's my enlargement okay and okay. you can see on this is an enlargement of the actual print so you can see here i've actually put in directional lines these are to help you with your embossing you can rub these out after you can you can leave them in on your print but these were you can see they're all going in different ways even on one petal, if you take one petal, if I draw that in, that's going that way, that's going that way. So on this, you'd emboss in the middle. I'm going to leave a little bit of gap, but you won't leave a gap. So as you go around, you're actually turning. Can you see? So it's difficult to show on an actual piece of parchment. No, that makes perfect sense because obviously the a petal has got that natural shape to it hasn't it exactly. so yeah. and if you was to just keep going straight it wouldn't look right no and and in the if you start in the middle it's almost straight down so where you can see my lines are close together there my my yeah. division lines are close together that's where i think you it, i did that to help you to leave a little gap you don't right. have the <laughs> gap in the same place this is this is you know this is to help people that are new. So if you left a little gap there, if you haven't left a gap, it doesn't matter. We can put these gaps in later, leave a little gap there. So you can see I'm starting to curve inwards now. Leave a little gap there. So, so I would work this way, okay? I'd be flicking my ball tool Away. So you flick away, some people flick towards them. Some people flick towards them, make a little gap there. Even that looks quite nice with just a black pen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you get the gist, don't you? I'm, I'm yeah. mean, with these, these are a little bit more awkward, the, the ivy leaves. So you're going to go down there. And, and I'd want to leave a gap in the middle so that my... Uh, it would indicate that there's a vein there. Yeah. So when you're embossing, you do some long strokes, some short strokes, some long strokes. Not one long, one short, all right? It's too uniform. So that should go around that way. And this is what we looked at last week, didn't we, in, the, <clears throat> in lesson one on the practice sheet, just to get our eye in, just to work exactly. on the pressure and put that undercoat in. Yeah, and I'd leave a little gap there as well. Didn't think I did it in pencil last week, and I thought, oh, well, you couldn't see it very well. So, so you can see on this leaf, these strokes are going that way, and these strokes are going that way. Okay. And when you come to there, those strokes will be going that way. 
So the lines that are, are printed on the, the white part or the clear parchment, but printed in white, those yeah. guidelines are there are there to help in relation, as you say, to the direction in which That's we right. should be doing that. Yeah. And if you leave where, where, where you see that little, this little dip here, yeah. dips, if you were to leave a white, a, a gap there in your embossing, it makes it easier then when you come round and that, that's maybe not going in the same direction as that. Oh, I see. So then that will help you. So if I leave a little gap there, that could, that's going that way. So I'm going to leave a little gap because that's going that way. So that they don't overlap one another and then you lose yes. the shape of the leaf. Yeah, yeah. Because when you get, I mean, with, with a six millimetre ball tool, when you do this, um, it's not very noticeable, but now I'm starting to go down to the smaller tools. I'm going to use the 4.5 today. Um, it's going to become more noticeable. And then right. as you move down the tools, perhaps I do um, this much with my six millimeter ball tool. And then when I come in with the 4.5 millimeter ball tool, I might do this much. And then as we go down the tools, the smaller tools, the three millimeter, I might do this much. And then when you when you're using the three millimeter ball tool, you could you could do some short strokes and then all of a sudden flick it a little bit. So you so you do a little bit and flick it a bit more and so that each layer then actually blends in. So that will blend if you flick it a little bit there that will blend in does that make okay. sense it does yeah so when we look at that finished piece then linda that you had with those beautiful doodle frames around it yes hint hint nudge nudge um <laughs> so when we look at the the whitest part of those flowers that's where we've started off with the six we've gone down to the yeah. and because we're always starting at that same edge of the flower the parchment gets whiter and whiter as the tool as the ball tool gets smaller and smaller exactly beautiful there's been a request that one after um pergamano school would you be able to post that card onto um groovy worldwide linda so that people can have yes, a little bit okay. more detail of course i will yeah i'll put a few Thank of them you. on so if you have a look you see these little areas here you wouldn't be able to do that with a six millimeter ball tool no and likewise you wouldn't be able to do all this embossing with that small tool i i would have said that would be a one and then maybe a 0 0.5 millimeter to hook it around yeah there. okay i do use them all when i'm doing this um but you've got to use them with confidence okay so with this one i started off with a six millimeter ball tool and then the 4.5 a little bit less and then the three millimeter and then the one millimeter and then 0.5 beautiful okay. so that it gives you then that gradual transition and you cannot yeah. see where one tool starts and the other one finishes no it looks as if it's just been sort of i suppose it's like the coloring isn't it with the shading and with coloring exactly. where you've got that the more you if you go on lightly to start with and if you keep going over in the same area it's yeah. likely to get darker so exactly. yeah beautiful yeah, yeah. so um you know um this is where i i try to slow you down you, you have to leave if you leave it overnight one layer at a time leave it overnight then another layer leave it overnight and then if you're in a rush you've got to leave it about 20 minutes between the the layers at least half an hour but you've got to really slow yourself down you've got to you got it if you're if you're trying to do it quickly i would say you need more layers actually and you need to you need to make your layers a bit lighter so okay. not more pressure less less, less more pressure. layers but yeah, less pressure yeah definitely okay well, um, i don't know i last week i did i set a challenge i don't know if anybody did it i asked someone to emboss one of their flowers um so that's right much that it became cotton wool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anybody tried it. And then I wanted them to try just embossing a little bit a day 
and then just to see this to find to find the spring i want you to find the spring in your parchment so Come i on, hands up in the room and did anyone do, did anyone do it did i did it this one i did earlier now i don't know if you can see it let's have a look see to me that looks lovely yeah but can you see it's <laughs> that, can you see the crisp you can see it i can see it plainly can you see the crisscrossing fibers yes i can yeah that's not smooth is it no it's not it when you when you go up close you can see it, it does as you say reveal that sort of cotton oh, wool look. look yeah and there look i've got yeah i did it so hard there that I've got a little, it's starting to crack. Yeah. Plus, when I press it, can you hear it? Oh, yeah. I shouldn't be doing that, actually. Oh, that could be a new thing, clickety-click. It's gone, it, it, it makes it go almost hard, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, that I did that in a couple of minutes. You know, it was a really bad embossing sample but i just wanted you to see that and if you compare that if you compare that to that it's very yeah. white isn't it but it, yes it is you know it's it's overly white those white bits should just be on the tips there's not that that's bit she did better than that isn't it yeah when you look at it it's more yeah. it's more of a natural look but with this one, you've hardly got any lighting shade. It's only where I've left the grey. So, and what will happen, what will happen in time is, well, if you put that in the post, it would flatten, and some bits would be raised, and some bits would be flat. And it would, if I did it a bit more now, the whole piece would start to wrinkle. So if you've and got crack that, as well, I've had it crack before where I've gone yes. into, I've done yeah. that, and I thought, oh, I remember in the, in the early days, I that was what my white work was like because I was impatient and heavy handed. And yeah. then I can go back to it a couple of months later and look at it and it has actually cracked. It's as if the fibers yes. have dried out. Exactly. Yeah. So if you, if you put it into context, if you put that in there and you did them all the same. So what you're doing then is you're stretching all of this, stretching, stretching, not letting it go back, stretching all of these and these bits where you haven't embossed, are still holding the the piece of parchment together they're the yeah. anchor points for your piece of parchment so all of these now are stretched to the hilt so what happens is the whole thing becomes distorted you get you get big creases and you cannot flatten it out to put it on a card right okay so, so all these bits you, you put in stress on all this paper inside and then it no you can no longer keep it flat Okay. okay yeah brilliant yeah. well right. not brilliant but yeah <laughs> uh, learning about the embossing is, is is as important as actually doing it you know mm. so what we did last week and i'm gonna have a little practice now so remember we did we did this one i don't know which is the back and which is the front no i did it so lightly yeah that's the back Remember, we had a little practice. We practiced. Right, yeah. We drew a line, and we practiced keeping it on the line. So the ball tool we used the six millimeter ball tool, and what I said was, it's roughly over half. If you place it halfway over the line, and because the ball tool hits the paper right in the middle, there's only a small bit that hits the paper. So. It's perfectly placed. So when you're embossing on your petals, it's from the outside edge in. That's what we're doing anyway. You might want to you might want to do a flower where you've embossed it from the from the center out, and all your mm. coloring then would be on the outside. It's entirely up to you. But some um, somebody said they had problems. I'm going to emboss a little bit harder now, um, leaving the gaps. So emboss a bit, leave a gap leave another gap so don't make your gaps uniform it looks a bit silly if all the gaps are together and in the sit of the equidistant so yeah. what happens is um 
when you're embossing your petals, you're so you're finding it hard to leave the gaps. You may not be able to see the gaps actually because you're embossing so lightly. So and once you start adding the layers, if you think you haven't got enough gaps, as you go along, you can still introduce the gaps, but they won't be quite as grey as the other ones, the ones where you've been able to leave a gap. So yeah. even though you fail to leave a gap, you can introduce them later on. Thus, you're giving yourself even more shading. So you see that one there where I've embossed. If I yeah. take a smaller tool, I can emboss with a four millimeter there. And then I can introduce a gap in that. So it's not quite. Oh, I see. Yes. OK, so if you can't do it with a six millimeter ball tool, it's not a problem. Um, it, it, it can come later and you can go in then in with a smaller tool later on and introduce another gap in a different place. All this shading in different places adds to the effect. Yeah. And the length. That, that's good to know because, again, I, I know when I was first doing this type of um, shadow embossing, I always struggled with getting the gaps. And then sometimes the gaps were too big, some were too yes. narrow. But so by reducing the size of the ball tool over the various layers allowed me to then reintroduce. Yes. And, and you can go, you think, I've left too much of a gap there. So you can go back in with your six millimeter ball tool. Now that the gaps are more apparent, you can actually, let's close it up with a smaller tool with a 4.5 millimeter ball tool. And let's make that a really narrow gap. Let's close that one up. Or you could go in then and close it up even more. You can have a really, really fine gap there. Mm. You can hardly see it, but it is there. Okay. <laughs> and, and someone else had difficulty if you've got a big petal. Um, when I say it's a press and a flick, when you flick off, and, and if you've got a big petal, you're not covering this area here. If you go a little bit slower and then flick off, you can extend your lines. Okay, so go a bit slower and then flick off. See, I wouldn't have thought that. I but it's obvious now that you've said that yeah. by going slower, it automatically makes you slow down the, the flick off, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, 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 it's that psychological thing. Yes, but when you go slower, make sure it's the it's the same pressure all along. You can go as far as you want. Mm. It, it all depends how, how much of the sweep your hand allows you to do. I suppose okay. it would be the same principle if that was like the stem of a rose or something like that. Exactly. And when we did, when I did this, the stems of the Christmas rose, I did them with a six millimetre ball tool. If you're nervous, you can do them with your four millimetre, but that's a really narrow gap. But you mm. can't actually get in there with a six millimetre ball tool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So have a little, let's have a little practice. So I've got my, I'm going to move now to my 4.5 millimeter ball tool. Okay. So that, that's got two layers on it. So I'm going to do exactly the same. So it's a press and a flick with the 4.5 millimeter. Are you able to come in any closer, Linda, on that? Or... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Way. Is that better? Yeah, that's brilliant. I'm getting quite a dab hand at these cameras. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we we'll so, make a producer and director out of you yet. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see my the strokes are actually turning in there. Okay. I'll do and you can see straight away how that that has gone whiter already. <laughs> yeah. Once you start moving down the tools, a six millimeter can be a bit boring, you know, you think, oh, there's nothing happening here. But if you give that basic, um, your, your base layer with a six millimeter ball tool, 
once you've got that decent basic base coat um it helps a lot with with what goes on top then with the rest of your layers so i always try and start at the middle of my petal which gives me the area that i should be sweeping in so some long some short i'm going to leave a little gap there I suppose it's like painting, isn't it? If you put a, an undercoat on, if you're painting a wall, you put the undercoat on, <clears throat> then it gives you a better finish when you put the, the top one on. Yeah. 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 So this is going to be, I'm going to do, try and show you here. On this one. So I'm going to, to go around the top, make, make sure the light is catching that bit there and get around the bottom to give a little bit of shape. And I'm going to try and introduce a little bit of shadow in there. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go along the top. We'll go. We'll go to our proper piece in a minute. I've I've done my homework and I've done mine with two coats on. So this is just to get your hand in, okay? And then from this this little this little turn it the same way. This little lip here. Yeah. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to go around the outside edge and I'm not going to do anything there. So just give it a little bit of shading in there. A little bit around the bottom to give it some shape. And then a little bit along the top. You can always change it later if you want. So you can see now. I've done it's come that come one. down a little bit, Linda. There you go. You can see I've done that one and those. Yeah, it really stands out. And then there, that one hasn't been done yet. So I'll go to my piece that I did for my homework. So there we are. And how long did your homework take you, Linda? I did it over two days. So I did one layer one day um, and one layer the next day. So that's two days worth of work, okay? So you can see, and it's great because now you can see that white print on the parchment, can't you? Yeah, yeah. And I've written front. Front. Because <laughs> even I make mistakes. There is a little F there. If you're not sure, right front on there as well. Just to, I put it in black because I thought, well, I can't fail not to see that. <laughs> and you can see I put a little mark up there. Yeah. What I always put a little mark where I start. So I always start on this one and I'll work my way around to where I started and then I'll do the ones in the middle. Right? Because right. what happens is, I find when you're doing a big subject, it doesn't really matter. Um, sometimes where you, you can see where you've been, but if your layers are very, very light with the six millimeter ball tool, you sometimes can't, can't tell how many you know if you've actually done that flower so i tend to work in a circle but and it's particularly important if you're doing more than one layer in one sit down so you need to rather than say i wanted to put two layers on this today mm. straight away one after the other i wouldn't put two layers on that flower and two layers on that flower i do one layer i do the whole thing with one layer by the time I've got round, it, it's had a little bit of a chance to rest. Okay? Yeah. So, turn it over. I've already got tumble dryer sheet on it. It's well lubricated. So I'm going to start now with this one here. So I've still got my 4.5 millimeter bottle. And just start in the middle and sweep around. I'm going to leave a little gap there. And then start the other side. And a question, Linda, just yeah. come to me. I don't know if anybody else wants to know, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> when you reduce the size of the ball tools, do you also reduce the pressure or do you maintain the same pressure throughout? I mean, no, I'm maintaining the same pressure for the first couple of layers, but the more your parchment is embossed, the um when when it's had a good embossing i can actually press a little bit harder right okay i'm using the same pressure now but it's going wetter because i've got um the, the smaller ball tool 
but you, you see you couldn't start with this one because you wouldn't get it'd be very difficult to get a nice smooth embossed line because I, it's it's the smaller the tool the, the more stripes you're going to get you know yeah. i suppose that's like the same I, I know i keep referring i don't know why i'm keep referring to painting a wall <clears throat> but i suppose if you've got a a, a six inch brush you're going to get a better coverage than you would with a, a two inch brush yes definitely yeah so i'm going to go on to this one now i'm going to do those little ones in the front And we're off for time. Well, we're all right. I don't think I'm going to get round it all, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I want to show you the second coat. The, well, no, this is the third. It'll be the fourth coat then, won't it? But I, I want to show it to you, but I don't want you to do it until tomorrow. That's me. You can definitely see it <clears throat> changing whiteness. Definitely. And another thing you see, if you take your time, and if I if I was to make a, a little mistake now, because I'm doing it so lightly, I can correct it later on with smaller tools. And you probably wouldn't notice that I'd made a mistake. I suppose that just comes with sort of practice and experience, doesn't it? And yes. so and the confidence. Yeah. And that's what we're giving now by we're giving people the confidence to, to give it a go and see what happens exactly and i'm trying to leave what and these back ones it, it, it is a bit difficult to leave that space there because it's such a small area to leave the gap and to maintain the direction of the strokes and with these little ones okay you can actually bring in um a three millimeter bottle at this point but still with the same amount of pressure so that then we'll start to whiten those little tips if you can leave it till later and do it just do it with the three and with it with a 4.5 and then bring the three in later it's up to you but if you're struggling with these with these little areas like that this area here if you're struggling with that just just the, the very point there but then i would go back in with a 4.5 so i'm leaving that little bit bit of a gap in the middle there so on to this one so there's a question i've just seen pop up um yeah. from the lovely pat hosking hi yeah. pat hi pat <laughs> so she said them um, you you briefly mentioned using a tumble dry sheet. Could you ask her if ask Linda if she would repeat that after each various resting time? I know I've I've not I've not actually um, had to do that. Um, I don't know. It might be the quality of my tumble dryer sheet. I don't know. But certainly, if the, the ball tool is dragging, then yes, it doesn't do the parchment any harm. Um, you don't need to to suffer um, with the roughness of the tool on the paper. Just give it another rub over. Does it? It really doesn't matter. I've never had to do it. I, I I've always found that once I put um, one layer of tumble dryer sheet, it just uh, it seems to last through to the end of the embossing. Right. Okay. There we go, Pat. I hope that helped. And somebody else asked that question as well. Who is that? It was Pat Hosking. as well. Oh, bless her. Pat is is a renowned uh, designer in, in parchment craft. And a I know, I know. Painter. And uh, she's, she's having trouble with her eyes, bless her. And she sent me two massive boxes of all her inspiration, her paint, some of her paintings, some of her bits of parchment, some of her patterns two huge boxes this week thank you so much pat she she's actually shared all her thoughts with me and i think i think that's an amazing thing for a designer wow. to do to actually give your stuff to somebody else to give them 
inspiration. I think that is the, the kindest gesture that any designer could ever give to anybody else. I don't know that I could share all my <laughs> all my bits and pieces. And, and she's, she's, uh, she's made me think of how kind it is to. So, so Pat, um, when I've gone through all the boxes, you'll be seeing bits of your designs turning up in groovy plates. <laughs> wow, amazing. So wow, I look forward to that. I would definitely give her credit when I've used her, her bits and pieces. Oh, I, I, I'm like a, I'm like a kid in a sweet shop. You should see what she sent me. I bet. Wow. It's amazing. Fantastic. And all these years of, of things that she's kept for inspiration and, and her own artwork um, that she's and her own patterns that she's designed. You know. So, oh, I thought it was amazing. So generous. Beautiful. So there's a question from Julia. Um, would you use um, Pergasoft in the same way? So when you're, because traditionally you would use Pergasoft, didn't you, when you was doing the yeah. embossing and perforating? Yeah, I haven't got one here. So do you dip the... the you dip, it's, a, it's a, little, um, a little round pot. You just dip the tool in and emboss away. And then once you've done that in one area once, would you need to repeat that? Oh, you've got to keep, Pergasoft is something you've got to keep dipping in because right. you're only spreading it on the bit that you're doing. Okay. So the, the only thing with, Pergasoft is good, but the only thing with that then is that, you you know, you've got to keep reusing it um, and you've got to, I do one pet and then I probably have to give it another dip again, you know? Right, okay, so tumble dryer is definitely the way forward then. It's definitely the best, <laughs> yes. I can't remember who came up with the idea of the tumble dryer sheet. I really can't, because Groovy, um, obviously I, I was familiar with the, the Groovy system when Barbara launched it. Um, I think I we've, like, been, we've been using tumble dryer sheets for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah. I, sort of, I can't remember, but... It is. It's just so easy, isn't it? Because it's that yeah. one application, as you say, um, and then you're good to go. Yeah. Right, if I turn that over, you can see the parts that I've yeah. started doing, okay? And you can really see that top one, um, that petal yeah. on the left, you can really see sort of the, the lines um, appearing now, can't yes. you? Yeah. So shall I give it another one coat? No, but I would I would not do this um, right here on the back. I wouldn't do this normally, but if I give it another coat, then mm. you can see uh, some where you need side. to be heading. So I'm still using the four point five. It's amazing watching it sort of come to life. Because that's what it is when you think about it. It's just a line art, isn't it? Yes. And all of a sudden, you're in introducing that that character and that depth. Quite simply, just with a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. say quite simply. I haven't done one yet, but do you know what I mean? It's it sort of it is that thing, and to have the tuition from you and to be able to to go back and watch it again and again and again. Um, yeah. And if you think, you know, I need to soften that a little bit, so you, you haven't quite, quite gone down far enough, you can go back in with a six millimeter bottle and just take it down a little bit further. You can always go, you can, you can interchange, you know, and go back and soften it a little bit. But I think I've got too much grey in there, I've just softened it now. And sometimes it's, it's all about the, the finishing, isn't it? Um, yeah. Right, so there's a question. I obviously missed it coming up. Jilly's just texted me. Is there anything else you can use instead of a tumble dry sheet? I know um, some people um, with the scent of it, it's like the dorso oil. Some people can't use the dorso oil because of the fragrance. No. Apart from Pergasoft, is there anything else that you can think of? You can use a candle. A candle. candle. Yeah, I can't think of anything else. 
I know back in the day, <laughs> this sounds really horrible. Um, I know um, when you used to have scoreboards that had patterns in them and um, and you had your piece of card down and you, you was using embossing tool. I suppose maybe similar to like the brass rubbing, type, you know, those type of stencils, the metal yeah. ones. Yeah. And you had to push into it with the card. And you used to take the, the embossing tool back there and you'd either scratch your head with it because the natural oils from your hair oh yes yes you could yeah um or even worse was down the side of the nose side of, your nose. The side of the nose was quite yes. oily <laughs> yes you could yeah well if you're not sharing your tools with anybody else no. <laughs> i mean if, if you're if you're somewhere where you're stuck and you haven't got anything then needs must it and it's right i don't i couldn't do that now because i haven't got any hair <laughs> there we've got another layer okay beautiful it really does stand out from from the the other ones where you, especially when you look at it on the back it stands out more prominently because obviously that's where it's still softest at the moment isn't it yes yeah And you know when you're doing this and, and you're coming to the end and you've you've put all your next week we'll we'll put all our we'll do the finishing touches. I'll show you how to finish it off. And then you start to rub out your pencil lines or pen lines or your ink lines, whatever you've got. It's quite mm -hmm. transformational. It looks really, really lovely. It's um it it sort of brings it to life, you know. Mm. Well, Barb was talking about that yesterday in the shack, wasn't she, with the, the finishing off and the sort of, yeah. um, I mean, that beautiful gold leaf technique. That was so clever, that gold Lovely, leaf. Wasn't it? I yeah. would never have thought of taking that gold leaf glue or watering it down. I would have just, well, there's a pot of glue. There's my brush. I'm just going to use it. But no, it was, it was, no, it was amazing to see the, the difference on sort of just taking the glue as it is and then watering it down and then yeah. barb said in her blog yesterday that she um tried it with the sticky ink when she had some time and that worked just as well because the sticky ink is more fluid yes i wonder if that would work on parchment though if you watered the sticky ink down because it's the it's the it's the um lack of water content in the sticky ink that makes it so good on parchment yeah, so I don't suppose you would need to, to water that down, would you? Because no, it's so I fluid. So. I mean, yeah. if it was perga glue, I suppose that would be the equipment you'd have to sort of dilute the water yes. down the perga glue. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then, as you say, if you've got too much moisture in it, then that's yeah. likely to cause buckling. But I suppose that's why the sticky ink was designed. Yes, yeah. It's great stuff, and the sticky ink. Yeah. You can use it with anything. So when you're doing um, a flower like this one yeah there comes a point where you're going to have to stop doing those back ones right so, so that they so that they sit in the background you they mean sit in the background and then those are you wouldn't do those the same as you would do those because they're further away further so away. they're less prominent yeah that's right and this sits in the background so yeah. you're going to have to decide then um where if you look at that one those are quite bright and those are you you've got to stop at some at some point so yeah. you have to then start to be selective about where you're putting your embossing okay so I've forgotten where i am now <laughs> it's very easy to forget where you are oh i know i forget though where i am at times and <laughs> but that's not with white work <laughs> <laughs> oh it's been a really sort of busy as well i've had real fun this morning because i've been prepping for um our one day special that we're launching barbara and i are launching tomorrow evening on um right. the last door and barb gave um a sneaky peek <laughs> of the beautiful um doodle frame it dies um, last year on our birthday event on the craft store, we launched the squares and the circles, and you've used those in that beautiful sample you've got there, Linda. Yeah, and, so I'm going to show us because <clears throat> I'll give you time to show now, Paul. So <clears throat> if you um, if you get two quotes on this now, 
and yeah. then we can uh, we can do a little bit more next week. Okay. We yeah, can do a perfect. Bit more of the, the finishing off and move down the tools a bit. What do you think? Yeah, that's brilliant. How do you think? Yeah, sounds okay. like a plan. There we are then. Okie doke. Super. <clears throat> switch, switch, switch back to there we go. Oh, wrong camera. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so Barb was say yesterday showcasing those beautiful, and in that sample you've got there, Lindy, you've used the squares and the circles, haven't you? Actually. And it just, it's all about enhancing and finishing off. Let me switch you back to the other camera so you can see full screen. So it's all about that finishing off. You've got that beautiful piece of artwork, and then how do I attach it so you can create apertures? But those doodle dies, you've used both. You've used both the um, the aperture element, which is the square part that creates the aperture within the card blank to reveal yeah. the little white hearts behind. And then you've used the frame, it's frames in the circle to create what we call a floppy element. It's lovely to use. <clears throat> and you've always got, a tre got trouble attaching parchment to yeah. your card. And these are perfect for that. And if you look <coughs> on this one, I cut one one of the apertures out in black, and one one of the frames out in black, and one of the frames out in white. And all I did was offset it a little bit. So you've got in some of them you've got the pink of the parchment throwing showing through, and then the little dots within the hearts. So yeah. it's just it's offset, and I thought yeah, that yeah. gave a lovely effect. And then it I does. used an ordinary card. And I put a piece of white card behind it so that it, it reflected the white hearts that were in that one. Yeah, it's beautiful. Well, to, tomorrow on the craft store, we're launching the um, the rectangles and the ovals. So I've got these here. Let's have a, a quick sneaky peek. So I've been having a play with them because we're prepping for the TV. So we've got the... Um, <laughs> this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to swap you around onto that screen. Oh, there we go. So this is the nested rectangle doodle frame it frames. So this is one big die. And when you run this through the machine, what you end up with, hang on, let me just grab my bag of goodies, let me do it on the white one, is that you get individual frames, just like that circle one. So they're the same designs as the squares and the circles, but just in rectangles. So you get the, what we call, Barbara and I, these are like the floppy bits. These are your individual pieces. Then we've repeated the same thing where you've got your nested rectangle heart doodle. And the reason it's called the heart doodle is because of the outer frame, okay? And then you've got the rest of the designs on the second one, which is the scallop. So we've got those in the rectangle and also in the oval. Now, for some reason, back in the day when we first introduced, so it's the same principle of both of those, but for some reason, when we introduced our fresh cut dies back in the day, when we had our basic nested shapes, like the square, the rectangle, and the circle, we never did an oval. I don't know why. We did the oval in the Pico, but never in a basic die. So now we've got the nested um, oval dies as well. And these work perfectly, obviously with the Pico dies to create that extra layer, and also with the oval doodle die. And I, I've been working so hard this morning, Linda. I've been doing so much colouring. <laughs> so look, oh, look, look at this. Isn't this beautiful? So oh. this one, what I've done, I've used the, the aperture die cut into the piece of card. Um, or the, Basically, it's this that comes in with the pack that I've just die cut the aperture in. And then it's just on a pink piece of pink parchment behind it. Isn't that lovely? So that's that design in the the rectangle, but now look at it in the oval. And now that I've got the nested oval dies, I can create that thin edge all the way around. Let me bring it in on this one so you could sort of really see. So I die cut the aperture element first and then put the nested oval die over the top and then cut it out. Wow. So you've got that very thin frame there. Okay, that it gets even better because then I went to the next one down and used the rose and did the, the rectangle, but the same design in the oval. That's and then this, 
this this was a, a, a clincher for me. You know, there are all these fluffy little bits that you can cut out um, from cards or paper or, or parchment. So what I did, I love this one. So this oh. purple frame is a floppy bit. It's one of oh. those pieces cut out in parchment, die cut in parchment, and then I use perga glue behind to attach it. Isn't and then good? I did it in the rectangle. Wow. So when you have a look, you've got that really beautiful finishing, but it looks so luxurious. That's beautiful. It? And so, prints, Paul. Yeah, they do. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna sell Linda's artwork. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what? When you're working, when you've spent that amount of time um on doing that beautiful piece that you've created, like that circle card that you've done. You want it to have that luxurious finish to it. You want it to, to stand out. So these beautiful sets of dyes, they enhance your work and they add that, as Barb was talking about yesterday, that finishing touch. You yeah. can use brads to attach it. You could put an aperture in a card and attach it as well. But just by doing those dyes, it really is. I mean, I was really... So I was many. really impressed with the squares and the circles. But yes. now to have the ovals and the red, I think the ovals are my favourite out of the two. Yeah, um, because they so. give that beautiful cameo look to it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, so they're, we're launching those tomorrow at six o'clock on the craft store. And then what else have we got coming up then? Barb's back in the shack on Thursday at 10 o'clock. Um, I'm continuing on the craft store. She can't be in two places at once. So eight o'clock on the craft store on Thursday in the morning, then the shack at 10 o'clock. Then I'm back on the craft store at 12. Then I'm back on at four for a final call. And then on Friday, I'm doing a, a show on Crate and Craft. Um, I'm taking some of our dyes on, our beautiful botanical dyes. And I've got a show at 11.15 on Crate and Craft. Lovely. So, um, busy. A busy few days, <laughs> but you know what? It, it's all good fun. And good. when I, I start playing with these beautiful dyes, it, it's not work really. It is, as I just said, it's playing. It really, really is. A great to have in your stash, though, don't they? So, oh, yeah, definitely. Good essentials. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I can't believe that hour's gone by so quick again, Linda. It just oh, yeah, no, gone. today. I, I can't believe it's 11 o'clock already. And yeah. Yeah. So, and now uh, we're so, pushing an embossing tool. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. that's the thing. That's what people are here for. And it's yeah. great to have this to go back to so that when I get some quiet time, I can go back and I can learn because obviously I'm watching, but I'm reading and, and everything else. So it's nice that I've got this to go back to and work as well to yeah. learn. Um, and improve what my technique as well. So, yeah. so as usual, thank you very much, Linda. Um, sure. I will see you. So we'll see each other again next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, yeah. And um, and then yeah, and then yeah. Who knows what's going <laughs> to happen come next Tuesday? <laughs> but as usual, thank you so much, Linda. Thank you everybody at home for joining us. Don't forget if you've tuned in for the first time today go back onto our YouTube channel and you can watch all the previous episodes. So I hope everyone's enjoyed today because I know I have. And um, we look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you, Paul. Right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Linda. I'll bye. see you next week. Bye, bye everybody.